Hallelujah. Hey, God bless you. Welcome, welcome, welcome. It's great to see everyone here tonight. And um, it's really exciting, actually, because um, uh, it's the first time, I suppose, uh, that we're having a conference. We've got uh, three or four churches in the city joining together. So we've got um, uh, Dave and Denise all the way from Powerhouse. Remember, they used to be, they used to be Beulah. And uh, when we got thrown out of our, our building years ago, they, they gave us a place of refuge. They looked after us. 
and uh, the whole family all moved in at their place and uh, we, we had a really, really great time. And uh, Wes and Janet are here. There's Wes. Janet is here somewhere, uh, Living Waters. And we welcome you guys. It's fantastic to have you in the house. And um, where's my mate, uh, Mr. Top? He might be around somewhere or maybe he hasn't quite got here yet. But um, there are some other churches uh, coming in, the uh, Filipino church and then um, uh, one of the African churches. Uh, the pastor's going to be here, I know, tomorrow night, possibly some of his people. And uh, of course, it's great to have Sister Anne with us. God bless you. And, uh, you know, we just honor, we really honor you. We really honor all of the ministry and pastors and that. We know, we know what, when we look down over there, we see all the scars, the bruises, the calluses on your knees, the, the hair loss. The <laughs> we, we, we know what it's like to, uh, to be in the ministry and to really push through for things of God. And we, so we honour all of you guys and Jonathan, Natasha, Brett and Tan there and Brian and Rach over there and Mike and Ali, Kelly and Mel, Corey and Renee around somewhere. And, and uh, yeah, give them a blessing, give them a hand. It's awesome. <clears throat> all right, I'm just going to take a little moment just to, to, the conference is going to be a little bit different in that we're going to be ministering together a lot as couples, and um, it's not so much a, a traditional teaching conference. Um, what we're going to be doing is sharing a lot of testimonies about um, how the Holy Spirit has moved in our life, what the Holy Spirit has done, and then the fruit of what the Holy Spirit has done. And so I want to give you a warning. I want to sort of pre-warn you that some of the experiences that will be talked about over the next few days will be out there. And um, like we're talking angels, visitations, being overpowered by the glory of God. Uh, we're talking supernatural experiences. And, um, and so it's going to be exciting stuff. And what I want to encourage you to do is, is don't be closed-minded. Like um, uh, there'll be things that you'll probably hear that you may not have ever experienced or seen before. And, and if you're not ready to lay hold of it, just put it aside. Just keep your heart and your mind open because our God is a supernatural God and He works in supernatural ways. And He does things that are often really, really beyond our understanding. And um, in fact, um, it's kind of just through a series of circumstances, um, we've discovered a, rediscovered a tape of um, uh, the meeting that we're kind of celebrating this with Jill Austin that was here. And um, she just, in the meeting, she just interviews me. I'd had an encounter with God at Michael Hawkins, and she does an interview. And it's a live sort of interview, and then she, she kind of has edited it a bit and done bits and pieces. Um, and it's kind of out there. But you know me, all right? And uh, you, know, you know that I'm sound, I'm strong, I'm a very stable, normal hu human being. So when you hear the tape, I, I want to I prepare you for those things. And um, all right, let's pray together. Oh, Holy Spirit. <laughs> we just honour you. We just love you, Holy Spirit. We know you're God on earth right now. You're with us. You're in us. You're around us. You're upon us. And Holy Spirit, we want to gather in these days to honour, exalt, to magnify you. We know, Holy Spirit, that you'll magnify the Father and the Father will lift up the mighty, wonderful name of Jesus Christ. And we just want to surrender. We want to come into agreement together. We want to be united of one heart and one spirit. And we just want to be open to you, Holy Spirit, and all that you have for us and all you want to do in our lives. And so, Holy Spirit, take control. We just want you to take over these meetings now and lead us and guide us. And we're just so excited about what you want to do um, for us and to us in these days. And we give you praise and we give you honor and we give you glory in Jesus' mighty, 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 mighty name. Amen. Amen. Give the Lord a hand. Thank you, team. The Stand Church. Hallelujah. This freedom in the house tonight. Thank you, Lord. We honour you, Jesus. We honour you, Lord. We lift up the mighty name of Jesus. Come, Lord. Have your way tonight, Jesus. 
Come on, let's just surrender to the Lord tonight. We surrender. We surrender. Oh, we are your church. We are your people. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Spirit fall down, start a holy riot. Feel this place now with the tongues of fire. Break the strongholds, come and unleash heaven. Burn within us. Make us bold as liars. Yeah, this is our revival anthem. Can you feel the darkness shaking? Oh, we are the dry bones rising. This will be our great awakening. This is our revival anthem. Hey, na 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 na. Oh, na 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 na. Oh, na. Lord, with a holy danger, lead us beyond our fear of failure. We'll fight, we'll fight the good fight in your strength and power. Yes, we'll take back the night, victory is ours. Lord, this is our revival and the Shaking, oh, we are the dry bones rising. This will be our great awakening. This is our revival anthem. Sing it out. Na 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 na. Oh, na 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 na. Oh, na 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 na. Oh, spirit fall, spirit fall down. Start a holy riot. Fill this place now with the tongues of fire. Come, Lord, and break the strongholds. Come and unleash heaven. Burn within us, make us bold as lions. Yeah, this is our revival anthem. Can you feel the darkness shaking? Oh. I'll break in praise you when our world is caving. We will not, we will not be moved. We will praise you till we see your kingdom. Greater things are surely coming. You are God, you are on the move. We will praise, we will praise you when our hearts are breaking. Praise when our world is saving, we will not, we will not be moved. Oh. We will praise you till we see your kingdom greater things are surely coming. Bring revival, Lord. We're 
hungry, so hungry, so hungry for revival, Lord. There's a roar in the chest. Bring revival, bring revival. Pour out on this city, Lord. Pour out on this city, Lord. There's a roar in the chest. Bring revival. We're ready for you, Jesus. Let's lift our hands to the Lord tonight. Come on, let's lift our hands to the Lord tonight. We exalt you in this place, Jesus. Welcome, Holy Spirit. by the blood. 
It's your glory coming. It's your glory coming. It's your fire coming. We cry out to you, Jesus. Jesus. The light of your glory
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Come on. Hallelujah. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Holy Spirit. Come, 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 Holy Spirit. Have your way. Have your way in the midst of us tonight. Have your way. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen, amen, and amen. Hey, you may be seated. God bless you. And uh, the high chairs, um, they're the low chairs. Tim? Or are they the high ones? All righty. Praise God. I'm going to let Nancy share. Put, it, put your hands together for babe. Okay. Awesome. Just, um, are you going to? Okay. I might have one while I wait. Oh. <laughs> Just beautiful to be in the house with you, family. Yeah, I, I really do. I really do sense the Holy Spirit in this place. I know you do too. And um, we just want to thank you, Holy Spirit, that you're here. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for your angels in this place. We thank you, Father, for looking upon us, for smiling upon us. We thank you, Lord, that you're looking at our city, that you're, you're opening the windows uh, of heaven over our city. Lord, we thank you for the harvest God, we just thank you for the work that uh, that has been done in this in this season, Lord, in our city, for the for the prayer, for the for the uh, work that the Franklin team are doing. God, we just want to thank you for all that you're doing, in your precious, precious name. We thank you, Holy Holy Spirit. Amen and amen. We well, you know, uh, as you know, Mary's asked us to share. Um, some encounters or experiences, and let me say it like that, that we've had. And, you know, I've been walking with the Lord for I don't know how many years now. Mary might have that number. But, you know, it must be 40-plus years that I've known the Lord. And, you know, there are landmarks in my life, encounters in my life that um, have literally changed my walk with Him. And, you know, there's a few things that I, I want to talk about tonight is one, or I want to share with you tonight is one, is that I want to tell you that the Lord, of a, of a time and a moment, I guess, when the Lord took me into the throne room, and I felt like I was in heaven. And I know I, I've shared this story before, but Father, I just, um, I just pray that this will be fresh for your beautiful church. I, I, I just want to say, you know, there's a place outside of this natural realm that God wants us to experience, go to. Jesus died on the cross that we could walk with him, live with him, abide in him, have this journey with him, you know, live above and not... You know, he wants us to, to, to be in that realm where we can live above the circumstances. And so of today, you know, of this, what, what we go through in this life. But let me just um, start with this. Is I had a deliverance, actually. It precipitated my experience going into heaven. And the deliverance, um, it was horrendous. <laughs> in that um, for, for a couple of years, possibly, you know, I was manifesting quite badly in, in different areas. You know, the Lord was like digging deep into my life and bringing things up to the surface. I want to say this. It was after I got baptized in the Holy Spirit and started speaking in tongues. I felt like I'd been born again again when I spoke in tongues. And um, as I got my prayer language and was able to just pray more and and and, you know, God gave me more boldness and so on. I also had all this stuff inside of me surfacing. Because, you know, I'm looking back now, I can see that he was dealing with some root issues in my life that had been hidden by religion. 
And what I mean is I was living a good life. I was doing all the right things. I was reading my Bible every day, praying every day, reading day and night. You know, I was very passionate for the Lord. I loved the Lord. And the only way I knew to find him was through the word. And then I got baptized in the Holy Spirit. And of course, that just shifted me to another whole realm. Let me say it like that. It just opened a whole new realm in the Spirit when I was baptized in the Holy Spirit. What I mean is, I began to speak in tongues. <laughs> you know, he baptized me and I began to speak in tongues. It just changed my life, church. I, I, I really do feel sometimes for people that don't understand that experience. But let me move on here and let me just say that I was manifesting in all these er different areas and, of course, taking stuff out on Murray. And, um, you know, because I couldn't see it, that I couldn't see for myself that I had the problem. So he had the problem. <laughs> and so, you know, a lot of conflict and a lot of stuff that went on. And I finally got to this, this place where I realised it's me. <laughs> I've got something inside of me that needs to come out. And Mel Maloney was part of our ministry team here in Christchurch. He was, he was here for a few years. And I went to, well, actually, I went to Murray first. I said, can you pray for me? I need deliverance. And he went, no way. Because <laughs> of the conflict, you know, because of all the stuff. And he went, no, I'm not praying for you. So I went to Mel. I want to sh share that because sometimes, you know, like the person that you want your security from, you know, and you feel safe with, and all that, you know, God was doing a sort of like work inside of me. It's like, I can't depend on him. He wanted me to depend on, on God alone. But I went to Mel Maloney and said, can you please pray for me? Mary won't pray for me. Pray for me. I've got, you know, I was telling on him. And I could see that Mel was going to have a wee chat with Mary. <laughs> and so anyway, we, we organised. I went into the room and Mary was there, thank goodness. And they started to me for, for my deliverance and I just want to share this with you what happened was I, and, I, and I started I was on the floor and I was screaming and this fear and this sense of abandonment came on me and I wanted to just hide somewhere and I started screaming out for my mother mummy <laughs> mummy I was screaming for her because I couldn't, I, I was in this dark place. I felt like my mother's womb or outside of the womb. I was a baby. But I was screaming for her and she wasn't there. And Mel was praying, Mary was praying over me and these spirits came out. It was a spirit of rejection. There was a whole family of them. <laughs> Lord, a whole lot of them. And they came out. And, um, you know, I don't know too much about that, but just, you know, it, even know how long we were half maybe I don't know might have taken you hours to sort me out you know I got up from that place I walked out that door you know, obviously changed something happened in that week these feelings of hatred started coming up for my mother I'd never felt that before <laughs> I'm in my 30s, you know, at this time. I'd never felt any hatred for my mother before. You know, possibly I'd buried it, didn't face it, whatever, whatever. But, you know, the Lord just had this stuff manifesting because he said, you need to forgive your mum. <laughs> I didn't really know what I was forgiving her for, but I share this to say that I've come and met so many people that struggle with their history, you know, the, the, the upbringing, whatever. And, you know, I never knew that was there. You know, after a week, I, I want to say this, I love my mum. <laughs> this was probably a demon. This was probably got into my soul thing. It wasn't something that I um, dwelt on. But, you know, the Lord set me free from that. And with setting me free from that hatred for my mum... And all of those rejection demons, it shifted my whole opinion of myself. <laughs> there was a lot of prophetic words going on around that season. So I was in the, my lounge, in our, um, in our lounge room, 
worshipping the Lord and just loving the Lord and obeying himself in his presence. presence. And it was like suddenly, and it was like that, in a second I was in the realm of this. I was in heaven. I was in a place, I describe it like this, it felt like I had arrived home. I felt like I was home, the sense of home for the first time. It was such a beautiful scene, <laughs> like I'd arrived home, I didn't want to leave. I, I, I looked and I saw God, I saw my father <laughs> sitting on his, on, it was like a throne. And I can't just, I, he, was, he looked like a man, huge, but I can't describe his face with anything. I just knew by the spirit that he was my dad. <laughs> And in that second, in those few seconds, I knew my nap, he was just the vessel that God used to bring me in onto earth. But in actual fact, God is my real father. And it was a revelation. It was like, when I say that, and you would understand this if you've had um, different encounters with God, I just knew that I knew that I knew, no doubt. No, no one can tell me anything different. <laughs> Some people have told me since, oh, you're just imagining it, da-da-da-da-da. No. <laughs> when we have encountered this with God, you changed. I was I, I realized, too, that deliverance, my getting happy deliverance from rejection enabled me to go to that place in the sense that I felt like I could. I felt like I was worthy. Rejection will tell you you're good, you're not worthy, that God doesn't love you, that your husband doesn't love you, that your friends don't love you. Rejection rejects <laughs> people. You know, and I lived with this thing for years and years and years. And, and although Murray would tell me he loved me, I didn't believe him. You know, and so I had this deliverance. I got into this place and I saw my dad, my father. And I said, Daddy, <laughs> that's what I said. And I ran to him, and I sat on his knee. And I want to tell you the love and acceptance that was oozing out of him. He didn't say a word, but I knew that unconditional love, that he just loved me beyond a love that I can explain. You know, it's a, it's a healing love. It's, it's the love of God that fast, you know, supersedes love of man. There's not a person, there's not a mum or a dad on the face of this earth that can kind of love. God's love is so much more. And so, you know, I had this encounter with, with my father where, and this appearance of his love, this unconditional, it was like, I'm okay. I'm not a dirty, rotten sinner. <laughs> I'm not a horrible person. The, our father doesn't think like that. <laughs> that scripture, you know, that he died. Um, he died for us. So, uh, even though we were sick, the Bible, he, he died for us. You know, he sent his son to die on the cross for you, even though we were sinners. It's not about being good. Like I said, I wanted to be good. I wanted to be good all the way growing up. I wanted to be a good girl. <laughs> Whenever I got in trouble, I tried. To fix things up by doing something for my mum, you know, wash the, clean something, do something. But I want to tell you, you know, when you come to place, when you recognise the love of God, it's not about being a good girl. It's not about being a good person. It's not good works. He loves us anyway. He 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 loved me before he created me. You know, you know what I'm saying. He loves mankind. He died. He's come to, to, to save all of us. He's come to save um, the, those, outside of the, those outside of the church, those that haven't been born again. You know, I've, I've got a whole message on that, but I just want to share this little piece here. That, you know, I, I was, I was um, the Holy Spirit, I, I didn't want to leave. I, I knew I had to. <laughs> I was in my lounge, and of course my body was still in the lounge. But my spirit was so in love with this place. I said, God, 
to stay here forever. The Holy Spirit said to me, no, <laughs> you've got to go back. And then he said, but you can come back here whenever you want. And that has never left my mind. It's the open door that God has provided to go into his presence and fellowship with him, to go into his presence just to listen to him, to go in, in there and have intimacy, you know, have relationship. But, you know, he said, when I came back down, he said, read John chapter 17. And I read, I read John chapter 17, and then he said, read 16. I don't know why he told me to read it back to front like that. So I read 16, and then he said, read 15. It's kind of weird. I still, quite don't, I still don't know why he, but that's clearly what he said. And I was reading, I've read those chapters over and over again, but that night I read those three chapters, and I started with 17. And, you know, as I read it again recently today, in fact, it's the prayer of Jesus praying for his beautiful bride, his church. It's the prayer that Jesus prays to the Father that his church will become one as they are one. It's Jesus praying that the church would be united. You know, I, I felt as I was reading it today, I felt this is a now, this is a now scripture. This is what God is saying now for our city. You know, I, I feel like I was reminded, you know, Jesus, when he prayed, he prayed according to the will of God, but all his prayers get answered. <laughs> and I said, thank you, God. Thank you, because you're bringing about unity in the city of Christchurch. You're bringing about a purity in your bride, in your church, in your beautiful church in Christchurch. Now, I can't, we look outside of our, we've got different pastors here, different church, you, different gatherings and meetings. You look outside and you think, well, who, Lord? <laughs> who are you joining us with? You know, my heart and my, I, I'm, and, I, and I believe it's yours too, we want to be united because God's put that inside of us. There's a yearning for that oneness that God has put inside of you and me. And it will happen. It, it's God's will will be done. That nothing's going to stop God's will. God's will is, is done. <laughs> and so, you know, um, you know, as a, as a reading through that, and, and I, that was highlighted. There's so much there that, that's highlighted. I want to talk about one other thing. It's the love. You know, when, when, I, when I was in that place, it was all about me. You know, it was all about, God, you love me. <laughs> you just love me just the way I am. I don't need to change. You know, it was all kind of like that young love that we have. And it's a beautiful thing, and, and, and the Lord loves it. You know, this, this, these moments that we have with him. But, you know, as, as I've walked through the years... The Lord begins to change us. You know, it says in, in John chapter, um, it's, it's John, um, uh, is it John chapter 15, verse 9, it says, Father, he's praying actually all the way through, 15, 16, 17. He said, Father, the love that you love me with, in other words, you know, he's talking to his dad, that love that you love me with, let that love be within my, ch in my disciples. Let that love, you know. And then let me let me highlight this. That love is incredible. <laughs> that love is amazing. And you know, John chapter seventeen. It just talks about the church becoming one, and the purpose. The purpose is so that the world will see. You know, this is what, this, this is the, the harvest. You know, that Jesus prayed for those that would believe from the testimony that we share. And it's the harvest. You know, we, we're in this season, this time when I feel like God is 
commissioning us, you know, he's preparing us, purifying us, getting us ready to commission us out there to reach those that are broken, those that are lost, those that have been taken captive by the enemy, those that are living in devastation, those that are living in that dark place, that place that you and I have been freed from. He's, he's, he's anointing us to go and reach those that he died for. And so, just a, 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 a beautiful love, but let me come back to what Murray reminded me about. I was in the throne room, and I'd gotten off of my, my father's knee. I'd got, gotten off, and I was down on this um, like um, sea of glass. And Jesus came down. He was next to the Father. And he got up, and he came toward me, and we danced and I, and I don't share that much, but I, 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 I want to share it tonight because, you know, there's places out in, the, in, the, in that realm that we don't or may not have experienced. But I want to tell you, he wants to dance with his church. You know, we saw the angels dancing. We, we had an outpouring of the Holy Spirit. The outpouring of the Holy Spirit came in 1992. And I want to share this. If I've got the time, in 1992, uh, we had a 21-day conference and we had um, different speakers and one of them was Jill Austin. She actually came to us um, before 1992, I think it might have been the year before, and we were in a different building than this. And Jill Austin, for those that don't know her prophetess, uh, a, a powerful um, a, a woman that carried the glory of God, she carried the anointing of God. Uh, we saw things shift and move even as she spoke and prophesied and prayed. Hundreds of people would go down in the spirit. I'm talking someone that was carrying a, a, a mantle but carrying the glory of God. And she, she, she came into our city in 1992, but before 1992, she came to a, a, a smaller church that we were meeting in. And uh, I met her at the door, the service had started, and we, we had a wee chat, and I said to her, you know, come on in, and I showed her her place, and she, she, she started to minister, and as she ministered, she was telling these stories about, you know, you, you know um, about God, God's power and God's light. And then she started praying for Murray. I, I'm probably not telling you in the, in the order of how it happened, but... Murray started going down in the spirit. Then he started dancing round in circles. And, you know, there was all sorts of things. And I was sitting watching in the back. And I share this because I had a critical spirit. <laughs> it's easy to be judgmental and critical if you think you know more <laughs> than someone else. <laughs> you know, God, God, God hadn't dealt with me. He's still dealing with me. But I want to say that... You know, I was, I was there not receiving. There were a lot of other people receiving, by the way, of the power and the anointing that she was carrying. A lot of other people were, but I was going, where's the word of God? She's not preaching the word. What preacher comes in here and doesn't open the Bible and, you know, read from the scriptures? See, see I can see now, not then, that that was just my religious spirit. I'd come up in a religious system, and I want to honour church. We did, we did grow, come through because God planted them. You know, we come up in the and I had that spirit around me. So no, this is not God. So anyway, she went home. I did my big religious smile, and you know, nice, to, you know, she would, come, you know, send her on away. And then in 1992. Mary said, Jill Austin's coming. I went, no. I don't want her back here. You know, she doesn't preach from the word. So I wasn't overly happy about it. But um, then he said to me, she's staying with us. I went, oh, no. And then the third thing he says is, I've got a camp to go to. 
So I want you to be at home to welcome her. So here I am, trapped. So anyway, you know, my heart was to do the right thing, to be the good girl. My heart was to do the right thing. I want to tell you this. God looks at the heart. He really does. You know, some of us struggle and we fall and we battle and we have big manifestations, but God's looking at our hearts. You know, God yearns for his people. And just the slightest move toward him, he's moving toward us. You know, it's like the prodigal father, the prodigal son, the slightest move. And so, and so Jill, I invite her in to the house. She arrives, it's night. And I'm nervous. I've actually, you know, the house is spotless, all that, all that you do to make a good impression. So the house is spotless. I've got some good stories to tell you. I haven't got time. She, she came in and she went, oh, you know, Jill. She goes, and she started to prophesy. She prophesied just in a natural way about myself. She said some things about um, me that I thought, how do you know? And Murray and our calling, and she prophesied. And it, and, but she did this in such a relaxed way, you know, just a, like across the table. So we sat down, we're having a cup of tea in, in the lounge. And she's talking and she's laughing and she's telling me things. And then I saw three angels standing behind her. You know, I, I'd, I'd never seen angels before. <laughs> These three angels, three different sizes... Um, uh, I can't describe more about them except that they were three different sizes and they were standing behind her and I, I just froze. I just froze. I mean, literally, I couldn't speak. I don't know if Jill knew, knew that I was frozen, <laughs> that she was talking to a frozen person, because <laughs> I couldn't answer. And she's laughing and talking and saying, oh, the Holy Spirit's here. And, you know, um, and I'm going... <gasps> And I, honestly, I felt like I was going to burst. That they, the, they stayed there. As they, st I can't, I don't know the length of time, but they stayed there until I was about to burst. I literally felt like I was going to burst and would, into a thousand pieces. And then they left, and it's like I knew they, they knew all my thoughts. They left because I was going to burst. <laughs> It, it, it was just kind of, I, I don't know how to explain it. I'm trying to put it in the language, but I couldn't even tell Jill. I was like, it's, it was an awesome, fearful, um, amazing experience to see these three angels standing behind her. I'll tell you, it certainly changed my opinion <laughs> of this lady. <laughs> so she went to bed. I couldn't tell her. I just couldn't tell her. And she went to bed, and when she got up in the morning, I said, Jill, uh, I said, I saw three angels standing behind you. She went, oh, three. And she, she said, because she, she didn't see them, but she just said, that's wonderful. And I said, but I was really, I froze, I was frightened. And she went, oh, we can take care of that later. <laughs> now, I didn't know what she meant. <laughs> but, you know, it's a spirit of fear and all that stuff that, that did happen later. And so, you know, we had the privilege, I feel like I had the privilege of having Jill Austin stay in our home for numbers of weeks. She, she came two, three weeks at a time and she stayed with us and, you know, often she would have dreams, she would have... I just, I didn't fully understand all that um, was going on in that realm in her life, but she would just be talking and... We went through quite a horrendous time of warfare with having her here. In fact, we had a number of leaders in our city call us in. It's all right to share that. And um, it was just that they didn't understand, really. I'm not, I'm not talking against you know, the leaders of the city, but we, they came in, they said, they asked Mary and I to come to this meeting, they said, we want you to ask Jill Austin to leave the city. We don't want you to host her any longer. And Mary said, but... It, the, the, what's happening is God. 
But you're asking, you know, we, we, we're just doing what God has, has um, told us to do, which part of what God told Mary to do was just take your hands off and let, let things go wild. I don't know how, how, but, you know, he wasn't to touch what God was doing. So people were on the floor laughing, crying, dancing all around the building, um, getting thrown here and there. There were hundreds of people going down in their seats. It was phenomenal. Um, we, we just had eight angelic visitations in our home in this um, we, we just had eight angelic visitations in our home in this church. We had one time, I don't want to talk too much though, but we did have one time when we were trying to leave the building. It was late. We would be here till 11 or 12 o'clock at night sometimes. Because the time, time doesn't matter. When, when, when you're in that place, there is no time. And so we were leaving the building, and it probably was around about 11 o'clock. There was, about, there was Jill and her driver. There was Murray and myself and maybe a couple of other people. We got out into that area there, and we were being shoved around. I know this is outside of the box, by angels. Angels were playing. <laughs> That's the only way I could say it. They weren't dancing. They were playing and we were running around in circles. We were trying to switch the lights off to get out of the building. <laughs> All these lights were off, but those ones weren't in that, in that area. And each time we went toward the lights to switch off, the angels would push us away and push us. And honestly, this is how it was. And Jill yelled out, she says, we have got to get out of this building or we'll be stuck here all night. So finally, one of us were able to turn the lights off, and then um, we were drunk, Murray and I. Oh, I'm telling you, you know, we were rotten drunk. <laughs> we could hardly walk, and probably holding on to each other going down the hall to get out the door, and I said, how are you going to drive like this? <laughs> and so the other, Jill had gone with her driver. We got in the car, he sobered up, and we were laughing <laughs> while he was driving. You know, enough tiddly. We were tiddly. But, you know, we got back to the house. I'm telling you, we lived in a little house in Down Crescent. We got to the house, we opened the door, and as soon as we opened the door, they were there. <laughs> oh, the angels, they, they were there. <laughs> they grabbed me. I felt, look, it just, this is, just can't possibly happen nor, in a normal thing. It's like we're you sitting, Tim. I was picked up and thrown right to the back there where the, where the sound desk is, to the far end of the room, probably not as far as it, but right back, and I slid down onto the floor, laughing and laughing. I, no pain at all, but we were all laughing and laughing. And, you know, just some of the experiences that we had were life-changing. And we don't, you know, I just want to say, I probably need to finish, I've got, but we don't, um, it's not about the experiences as, as, as such or the person. It's about getting to know the Holy Spirit. You know, our hearts were changed. You know, I fell in love with the Lord all over again. And I got to see, you know, a different part of God and who he is. You know, he started to open the scriptures up in a whole new way. And, you know... I saw so many people with their hearts just being, tra minds transformed, hearts changing. And, you know, we can look at all the phenomenal things that can go on and, and get, get, can I say, off on the shaking and the baking. I don't mean it in a disrespectful way, but sometimes, that, you know, I, I, I begin to see, for me anyway, that my flesh did, sometimes did that. Me, because I was hungry and I was striving, so I tried to get more of God, you know, and I tried to get more of the God and I started manifesting to get more of God. And, it, and it's, I discovered that, no, abandon yourself. Just let go and allow him to have his way. I, I want to share one more thought. You know, I saw so many people being touched by the power of God, either delivered or you know, just different things going on. I saw so many things happen. And sometimes I was in the congregation and nothing was happening to me. And, you know, when I got past this driving stage, I said, OK, God, I'll just wait. <laughs> and I wasn't striving. And I'd see all this and I'd go, what's wrong with me, God? You know, it's that whole thing. I share that because 
you know, you know, God just, he, he does a work inside of us. He wanted to help me to see he loved me even if I did, couldn't, didn't feel him. Even if I didn't fall on the floor and cry or didn't laugh or he still loves us. <laughs> You know, and so it was about, for me, just no, no striving, just love him because he loves us that way. So amen. Amen. Thank you, babe. Oh, oh thank you. <laughs> She's leaving me. That's all right, babe. <laughs> So, um, yeah, there, were, there was lots and lots of things, but um, um, what I'm going to do is we found this tape, and um, in part of the tape, it's, it's so what happened, all right, so <coughs> here we go. Um, the first night of the meeting here, uh, there was a move, of, a move of the Holy Spirit, and, and there was, like Nancy said, a lot of people started, there was various manifestations and things that actually happening. And I wasn't actually dramatically touched at all. I was just a part of it, but I was really, really excited about what the Lord was doing. And some of our team, because we, you know, we had Michael and Maureen Hawkins, and there was Mel and Teresa, and there was, I think, the Hagans were here, and a whole lot of our team in that. And what happened is after the first night, there was a lot of division in the team. And, and um, some of them were actually saying, oh, this is not God, this can't be God. And I remember one of the questions that uh, one of the pastors had said, to Jill, said, oh, where in the Bible is um, uh, people dancing with angels? And there was all sorts of questions coming. So we decided that we would go away over to Akaroa and spend a bit of time to try and sort out the problems. And so we got away there, and we were, it, it, there was probably about 10 of us over there in the house and um, discussing it, and we just couldn't get a resolution. And um, I suppose different people's recoll recollections of what happened are probably slightly different, but we got to the to the end and we just had to go to bed because we were coming back to a meeting the next night and um, I said I said look we, we can't go to bed like this it's all division you know don't let the sun go down on your wrath we've got to pray and find some unity and um, I don't know why but we ended up in a circle holding hands and I hate that holding hands thing <laughs> uh, I've got a I've got a sort of a repulsion to that holding hands and because in the Nazarene church they used to make us hold hands and sing to each other and if you were next to a man you had to hold hands, and then it was this song about, I love you with the love of your Lord, and I see in you the glory of the King. And you're singing to this guy and holding hands, and honestly, yeah, I struggled, all right. Now you saw my demons coming out. But, um, <clears throat> so, um, but anyway, for whatever reason, we ended up holding hands. And when we hold hands, Nancy and I just got absolutely drunk in the Holy Spirit. Everybody else is just standing there. We fell on the floor. We were just laughing hysterically, just bursting out laughing and carrying on. And, and um, I can remember some of the comments like, this is ridiculous. And some person, they folded their arms and all sorts of things were going on. But we were, we were, we were just going out in God. And then, and then what actually happened to me is God, I had a visitation there. And in the end, everybody just sat down and God just took me through a visitation. And, um, and there was a whole series of things that actually happened. It was interesting in Nancy's story because it started off for me was deliverance as well. And um, you'll hear it on the tape when I talk about it on the tape. But um, what happened in the vision, when I went out in the vision, I was in, um, in my bedroom. I was just a little wee boy. I was in a cot. And I, one of those cots, remember, they used to pull up the side and they had the doweling. It was white. And I was small. And my mum and dad were in the room. And they had their backs to me and they were fighting, they were arguing. And I was there in the cot and I just had this incredible deep sense of loneliness and rejection. And um, you'll hear when the tape con comes on, I was, I was, I can't remember what I was saying now, but they don't, something like they don't see me, they don't, they don't, they don't want me, they don't see me. And so what happened in this is, you'll hear it in the tape, and then um, the Lord delivered me from rejection and all sorts of other stuff, so I had this deliverance. And then I went through a series of encounters with the Lord. Um, yeah, oh, the tape, it's sort of hard to remember all of these things. One part of it, though, I'll say because it's not on the tape, is um, in, during the middle, the middle of this experience I had with the Lord, the Lord took me up 
and I travelled, and I ended up in John Paul Jackson. He was a prophet in America. I ended up in his office, and I was standing in his room. The guys were there. I was describing his room, and he was kneeling at a chair. It was a leather chair with all those buttons. You know, it has the diamonds, big leather armchair. He was on the floor. He had his head in the seat part of the armchair, and I could hear his prayer, and he was asking the Lord whether he should take on a pastoral ministry because he was a travelling prophet. And he was saying, Lord, am I supposed to be a pastor? Am I supposed to take this church? And I stood there, I heard, heard his prayer. And, and that one was really amazing because I, I got to meet him later on and talk about that. And then, in that. and then the Lord took me from there and he took me over and I was in Paul Kane's bedroom. And he was in bed, he was really, really sick. And standing over him, was a, I knew it was the spirit of death. And, um, and I started praying, and Nancy was telling me, because I wasn't aware of what they were doing, because I was out in this realm of the Spirit. And I started praying against the Spirit of death, and Nancy said that everybody in the room, they all, with one accord, all just entered into the same prayer, and we rebuked the Spirit of death, and it went off him. I knew that he was healed. I knew God had supernaturally healed him. <clears throat> So some years later, we were at a conference in Kansas City, Missouri, and, um, and they had a big pastor's luncheon with about 500 pastors and wives and that were there. And we were there with Jill and, um, and uh, Roger and Lane Hagen and Nancy and I, and we were at a table, and um, there were different prophets and people speaking at the luncheon. And right at the end of the luncheon, John Paul Jackson came in, and they recognised him. They said, oh, John Paul, come up. Do you have anything to say? Has the Lord given you a word for anybody? And he stands there and puts straight out to us on our table and prophesies over us. And, and it was a prophecy about apostolic ministry and palm trees and, and planting churches and all kinds of things like that. And then he prophesied over Jill and he never said a word to anybody else in the meeting and that was it. So at the end of the meeting I thought, this is my chance. So I shot up there, um, up the front to see him and um, he, you know, he was gracious and I said, look, um, you know, I'm from New Zealand, and I had this encounter, and it was around late August, early September in 1992, and in this encounter, I came in the spirit, and I was in your office, and you were praying about whether you should take a pastoral ministry or not, and he, he, just, he just went, he just kept on saying, oh, the love of God, the love of God, the love of God, he just said, why would God show someone I never knew and was probably never going to meet across the other side of the world? Why would God, you know, he, he saw it as God's love for him. He said, why would God have you praying for me in those circumstances? And he confirmed it. He said, I'm in the pastorate now. I'm pastoring the church. The, I, I prayed through and that was the decision I made. And that was incredibly encouraging for me because in, in a supernatural experience like that where you're transported, um, from Christchurch into somebody's room in America, you're seeing all this stuff in the spirit, and to be able to talk to him and have the confirmation of that really, really just um, reassured me. It, it, was, it was really, really powerful. But the Holy Spirit, like um, for me, after the encounter with the Holy Spirit, just ev everything just changed. Everything changed. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to get them to put on the tape, and then I'll explain a little bit after the tape. And it's a little bit heavy in the tape. And Jill sort of narrates. And it's kind of interesting because I'm the one having the encounter, but she's narrating. So some of the narration's not 100% accurate um, to my actual experience, you know, but she was trying to share it through. So I was, she was probably here with the microphone, and I think I was about there. Concrete floors, we'd only just moved into the building. We'd gone from around 200 people to 800 people in three days, just, and with no advertising, just the Holy Spirit moved and people just started coming from everywhere. All sorts of, all sorts of miracles taking place. So if, if you uh, hit it, guys, and we'll just we'll listen through. It gets a bit interesting. <clears throat> How many of you would like to have more of the glory moving in your life than you've ever seen? <laughs> It's always more exciting when it's personal. Me, 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 me. That sounds fast. <laughs> but, you know, what I saw was I, I saw hunger. What I saw was I saw excitement. 
Uh, I went to a meeting and I was down in the city of Christchurch, which is in the South Island. And I was, I was down there. I did about eight different citywide meetings. I was down on the South Island. Many times the Lord would wake me up in the middle of the night and the Lord would give me words or, or pictures or I'd be in the word of God for hours where he'd give me information over different cities. And because I said, Lord, 24 hours, seven days a week, Lord, wake me up any time, he does it. And so you don't have to worry about getting up at six or seven in the morning. He wakes you up like from three to six in the morning. And so many times I'd wake up and he'd go, good morning. And I'd go, Lord. And he goes, but we need to talk. And it became a wonderful season because it became a time where God would, would stir me and prompt me in the middle of the night. And so what I found is one night when I was down in the South City, the Lord woke me up and he said, Jill, do you want to dance with my angels? I was shocked. How many of you have heard the Lord say something like that? I hadn't either. And I said, no. <laughs> I'm really tired. It's 3 o'clock in the morning. No, I don't want to. Very honest. That's probably why he does these things. And, and then I was awake enough, so I said, well, where are they? Thinking they were over at the church. He goes, they're in the living room. Do you want to dance with them? I said, no. So I went back to sleep. <laughs> the next day I was staying at the pastor's house. I said, Pastor, the Lord woke me up, asked me if I wanted to dance with angels. And he says, well, we invite the angels around here all the time. And so I did a meeting that Sunday night. What happened was... It's very unusual, as I'm used to seeing the anointing and the presence of the Lord moving in rooms. I'm used to seeing the hunger. I'm used to seeing that heart that says, God, I want you. But what happened was is there, the, the, the air was charged with a tangible anointing that I've never seen before. At the end of worship, I saw in the Spirit about seven huge waves, like tidal waves, full of light and glory, starting to move through the room. And my first impression was, well, Lord, what is that? And he says, that's my glory. I'm bringing my glory waves to move in the room. And so now in old times of revival, they talked about how the glory of God would move through the room. I just had never seen it. I didn't understand it. And also what happened is when the fire of God would move through the room, you'd see hundreds and hundreds of people. All of the, you'd see the waves hitting the room as hundreds would fall down at one time. And so the chairs were everywhere, and it was really kind of fun, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and then what I think startles me when I come back to America is I don't hear the cries of deliverance. I don't hear the cries of intercession. I don't hear that cry for passion. It's so quiet. And so I'm so used to going into a service there where their services would go hours after hours because there was a desperateness for God. And now the desperateness for God, uh, people were crying out and saying, God, I want you. And so the power of the Lord was touching people all over. There was lots of words. But as you can imagine, it was a little controversial. It wasn't that I planned it that way. I didn't touch anybody, but God was busy running around doing God stuff. And I'm there going, I didn't touch anybody. I, well, okay, you guys, you see what's happening? Work it out with him. And you see, when God awesomely and powerfully is touching people, how do you work it out? And so what happened is I was invited to a house by the sea. It was kind of like a back room meeting, but they put it in a nice house by the sea. And I was invited by an, Ang an Anglican vicar and uh, who, who also was part of this church where the power of the Lord was moving. He had a few questions. He was very South Island, very English, very conservative. And he says, Jill, I saw hundreds of people dancing with angels. Where is that in the Bible? <laughs> I forgot to tell you at the end of the meeting I says would you come up and the next thing I know hundreds of people were dancing with angels all over the room shooting across the room and I'm standing there going dear Jesus I have never in my life seen an awesome display of you ever I mean it wasn't just a thing where people were shaking and on their face crying they were loud I mean everything you can imagine and, and if you would stop and try to interview them they'd talk to you and say yes this is God and go on their way or they'd be on the floor for hours with the raw fire of God rippling up and down their body for hours and if you'd bring them up I'd say what happened and they'd say I went into the throne room 
And I saw red and yellow fire, and then I saw an altar. And I saw a man standing by the altar, and he told me to get on, and I told him no. But then he told me to get on, and I got on, and then the wings around the altar covered me. That was the pastor's wife. Little children were coming up, and they would be crying, and I'd say, what did you see? And they said, well, uh, I was with Jesus in a cloud over the city. And uh, the city, uh, there's all these houses full of light. But what happened is the, the, uh, the light started to go off. And as the houses became dark, Jesus started crying, and so did I. And the whole room fell on their faces, sobbing for hours, the adults, by the testimony of a seven-year-old. Because, you see, when you have that kind of a movement where God's sovereignly moving, little children are coming up and sharing, and uh, women and uh, adults and so forth. And this went on for 21 days. And what it did is the momentum built, and people are on their faces crying out, saying, God, I'm hungry. God, I want to know you. God, I want a visitation. I want you to so firebrand your heart from my, my head to my heart. I want to be changed. There was a desperateness in the people for God. They all came with their sticks of hunger and passion for the Lamb. They all came with first love. They didn't look to everybody else to ignite them. They came to bring the fire of God themselves. And I it was, many times during those days, the Lord would fall on the teenagers and the children, and I'd have a crowd of maybe 50 kids around me. And I'd say, okay, kids, you're my prayer team. I'd like all the leadership, all the pastors and wives, anyone in full-time ministry in this room to come up. And maybe there'd be 50 adults coming up because these were citywide meetings. And as these little children, shaking, would stand on their tiptoes, and they'd say, Holy Spirit, consume them. The power of God would hit them, and people would go down in the the room would stand up cheering because out of the hands of a child, powerfully, the leaders were touched for God. So you see, what is exciting is if you have a, an anoint, if you have a touch of God on your life, it changes you. All of a sudden, you're not so depressed. All of a sudden, you're not so discouraged because God has met you. All of a sudden, you realize that that there's destiny and there's purpose in your life. That we have a, a God who's the great I am, who, who wants intimacy and relationship and love for us. And so when I got to this house back with this Anglican pastor, this was only after one meeting. I can remember, I said to him, well, when it talks about Jacob's ladder, the Hebrew name means an encampment of dancing angels. And also, manifestation means the dancing hand of God in Hebrew. So if the power of the Lord is moving on someone, that's the dancing hand of the Lord. It just means that we're a clay vessel and the fire of God in us is more than our clay can take so we, we shake. But it's not the shaking. It's what's happening in your heart during the time that makes the difference. It's whether you're in that place of saying, God, anything in me to have your fire purge me out. Lord, if there's anything, it says that John came with water, but Jesus came with a baptism of fire. He came with a fan in his hand, and with that fan, he fans us, and he works out and purges stuff, but he also enlarges a greater a place in us to contain more of his presence and more of him. So you see, all of you have a choice of how hungry are you for God. How much do you want? When I was back at this cabin, let me try to finish this story, I said, why don't we pray? And the Anglican pastor, a vicar, he's a friend of mine now. <laughs> then he didn't know if he wanted to know me, but we're friends now. <laughs> he said, uh, I, I, I says, why don't we pray? He says, I knew you'd want to do that. I says, well, I don't know how to explain how God moves, but if we can pray and ask the Lord to come, let's see what Jesus does. Now, the other pastor couple, Murray and his wife, Nancy, uh, they loved what God did at their church. The power of the Lord fell on them. They started laughing hysterically, got drunk, and fell on the floor. <laughs> but uh, Murray, the Anglican vicar, and his wife got stiffer and more uptight looking. And so I had two fronts. I had cold and hot fronts. I'm in the room going, please, God, make this work out all right. Please, Lord. And I said finally to the Michael, the vicar, I said, are you enjoying this? <laughs> he goes, I don't understand. Why are they laughing? 
I says, well, why don't we sit down and talk about it? Well, Murray was already on the floor, so we didn't need a seat. <laughs> and so we sat down and I said, Murray, talk to me. What's happening? You're drunk in the spirit and you're laughing. How do you feel? Now, this is a live excerpt from the revival in New Zealand when Pastor Murray shares about the Lord visiting him. <laughs> And now I'll tell the story why they're on the floor. And so then what happened, what happened, I need to share this with you real fast. What happened with Murray is he started to share what he was laughing, how he really felt the peace and the strength of the Lord. Then all of a sudden he looked at the people in the room and he started giving them all prophecies. Now he was laughing one moment doing angel talk or speaking in a different language that was not his normal tongue. And the next thing you know, all of a sudden he's explaining what's happening and he's giving sp strong prophetic words to people, okay? All of a sudden, the anointing went away through him again and all of a sudden the Lord took him back to when he was a child. But he explained what happened. Um, uh, I, um, uh, um, <clears throat> I, um, <laughs> uh, just the, the Holy Spirit started to come on me and uh, to sort of do a healing, and He, he started uh, taking me back um, through my childhood to things that I couldn't uh, remember with my natural mind, and, uh, and I went back and back and then uh, I started uh, calling out that um, they, they didn't want me <laughs> and, uh, 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 and uh, I, I just felt so lonely and, and, uh, and the, the Lord came came back by a spirit and it, it was like my um, spirit uh, spirit man had been uh, rejected and 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 the, they didn't want me and the Holy Ghost uh, started to come and touch touch uh, touch my spirit uh, and, 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 and 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 he started to heal heal me uh, 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 uh. A little time later. Uh, yeah, and um, and um, then the the Lord just sort of. Did Meanwhile, a back in the jungle. <laughs> in my life and uh, uh, deliverance, I felt the Lord set me free from some things and and um, uh, uh, then uh, it's sort of like I just it's the Lord said that I was going to be like a, a, a guinea pig <laughs> and that uh, he was going to show them publicly what he usually does to people privately and when people have visitations of the Lord most often it's a private visitation and it's not something that happens in a public place and, and he uh, said that he was last night he was just going to he used me like that and he was going to show the people how he comes to visitation and then he threw me on the, on, 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 on the ground. Oh, uh, uh. Now what happened is he was already on the ground, but what happened is he was laid out. Okay, and as you were laid out, now what happened is God took him back broke apart and freed him, okay? Okay, first of all, he was laughing. And, and he felt strength and safety. All of a sudden, when he talked, he felt a real clarity. And he started prophetically giving words to people in the room. Then all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit moved and God took him back to an area in his childhood and freed an area. He went through some deliverance, but then all of a sudden, he felt a clarity again. The next thing you know, he laid on the ground, and he says, Oh no, I'm going to the nations. 
and God took off with him. So let's go. Uh, and I, I was laying on my back with my hands out and I can't explain it but just it was like I was uh, shooting through the air at uh, like a thousand miles an hour with my hands back on my back and the nations were just flashing under my feet and the Lord uh, said I give you authority in that land and I give you authority in that land and I give you authority in that land and I give you authority in that land the Lord said I give you authority in the land and I have prepared a way for you to the nations I have established my plans and purposes for you to go into the nations and do not be afraid for I have set a path before you <laughs> Okay, now, let's go to the... He's going into the throne room, and he started to say living things. <laughs> living things. <laughs> now, see, what's happening is he's reliving it. What was happening? That's where we're holding it. I'm, I'm not scared. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not scared. It's, 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 it's awesome. It's, 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 it's just too, too much for me. It's, it's why I can, oh, I can see. Okay. Okay, he started to say creatures, living creatures. Then he started to say wheels. Wheels, eyes, eyes. <laughs> wings, 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 wings. Eyes, 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 eyes. They see, they, they see, they see, they see, they see, they see, they see the hearts of men. They're violated. Oh, my bride. So now, Lord, give us a heart for your bride. Give us a heart for your church. Give us a heart for your people. So as he went up into the throne room, what he got was a heart for the church, was a heart for the people of God. And then he went through intercession and started weeping over the bride and over the people and over the city. And so Lord started to impart to us that this week. Lord started to impart to us that this week. Lord started to impart to us your heart. Lord, that we'll go into your throne room and we will see you, Lord. That, Lord Jesus, that you will move into the deep things and mysteries, Lord. That you can trust us to be your friend. You can trust us to be the friend of God, Lord. That, Lord, as we reveal your mysteries, Lord, you protect everything that's coming through now, Lord. Lord Jesus, we release your intercession now. Lord Jesus, that you will give us a burden, Lord, and visitations all over the world, Lord. Jesus, you would show them the throne room. You would show them nations, Lord. You did that to me. You've done that to Murray. You've done that to people. Even in this room, they're remembering, Lord, times when you have fell, fell on them, times they've had in deep prayer, times they've sought your face, Lord. We release that, Lord. I believe that what God is doing is God is revealing mysteries and revelations to his people. I don't understand it all. But you see, what I saw happen Sunday night and what happened with Murray, and I was explaining what was happening, Murray, to the people, and God kept coming and we were crying and praying. You see, what's happening is God is going to do deep things. And part of it is us saying, God, we want you. Um, I, ne I need to just uh, the last little part, only say about something about the bride. The Bring us mic up. God um, wanted uh, the bride, the church, had, it was to be a virgin bride, and men, and that over the ages, came in and they violated the bride and they put bondages on the bride and the law they brought the law and and they brought the rules and and the law and and they tried to destroy my bride they took her freedom they took her liberty and they bound her they bound, bound her 
I, 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 I am going to destroy the power of the law over the church and the pharisaical system on the church. Um. Now come, Lord. Release a, a more of your spirit, Lord. I'm traumatised. <laughs> I know it was a bit unclear in that in places and that, and also I'll try to explain a little bit. When I, when I saw the living creatures, they had six wings, and all over the body and all over their wings they had eyes. And, um, and I thought, I, I wasn't afraid, but I thought I was actually going to die. And, and the thing about the eyes, um, you, you read about this in Isaiah chapter 6, and it talks about the seraphim, and you read about it in Revelation chapter 4. And um, the eyes didn't look at you, they looked through you. It, so when I saw the living creatures and I saw the eyes, it was like my life was completely exposed. I, it's it's, it's um, absolutely exposed, nothing hidden, just completely, your life is completely transparent. And... and um, yeah, so it was it was frightening because it was it was both glory and judgment right there and then. It was just it was just absolutely incredible. Um, there was there was some other things that happened. The in the when I came to the part of the bride, the <clears throat> the Lord actually uh, took me through, and I it was He took me into a dungeon, and the bride was there in white, and um, like all, all ready. It was the church to be married to the Lord, and, and she was beautiful, and, um, but she was in a dungeon, and they'd chained her hands, and they'd chained her feet, and then the door of the dungeon opened, and religious leaders came in, and they had those big mitred hats on and robes and that, and they actually came into the dungeon, and, and what the Lord was showing me is that the bride of Christ had been bound by the spirit of religion by the law and all of the rules that had been brought into the church and um, basically that the spirit of the world was wanting to destroy the bride of Christ and um, it, it was it was more graphic it was kind of like they were raping the bride and the religious leaders and then the Lord gave me it was a word of judgment actually and the Lord said no longer will I allow religious leaders to rape my bride and take advantage of her and I knew it was a word of judgment and I've even today sometimes when things happen in the bigger church world I think it part of it could be God's judgment if churches get out of offline and you know these churches today, they run more commercially than spiritually. You know, it's all about the advertising and all sorts of stuff like that, and they run commercially, and they're not, they're not Holy Spirit churches. They're building kingdoms, but not necessarily His kingdom, and that's what the Lord is going to judge. He's not going to allow a false church building personal kingdoms, but there's only one kingdom in His church that is being built, and it's the kingdom of God. And... Um, so it, I suppose out of, I've hardly ever shared that, I've never played that tape anywhere to anybody ever before. So it's kind of a bit, you know, when I say it's a little bit traumatising, I feel pretty exposed and undone at the moment. Um, but, um, and I've only ever probably spoken about it maybe seven or eight times in 30 years because... Um, the only reason that I can speak about it is because God said it was that I was going to be a guinea pig and what he did in private was going to be brought out into the public. But I've, always, I've never wanted my ministry to be based on an encounter. Um, I've always wanted my ministry to be based on my relationship with the Lord. And I've never wanted people to be attracted to um, encounters of God or what the hand of God. I've always wanted people to be attracted to the God of miracles, not the miracles of God because all of the other stuff comes out of that intimacy and the, the deliverance and everything that the Lord did in my life that night was all necessary paving away so I could have that encounter with God. And, um, 
And so that's, that's always been my heart, is that people really get to know the God of miracles. The miracles are a byproduct. The experiences, the supernatural experience, are a byproduct of that intimacy with God. And so we, always, we want to keep him first and central. And, and I think that's really just absolutely vital, because sometimes you can get caught up in all the manifestations, the other things, and you actually move off God himself. And he's the one, he's the one. And the Holy Spirit, see the churches, and I, and I don't mean this disrespect, but the church is failing. We're not impacting the world at the moment the way, you know, we're not even scratching the surface. That's the reality of what God wants to do. And for the harvest and for what the Lord wants to accomplish, the Holy Spirit's going to have to be released to move and to do all of those things that we can't do. And it's the Holy Ghost that is actually going to use his church to bring in the harvest. And the move that is coming into the church is going to be a move of the glory. The, Lord, the Lord's been speaking to me a lot. The reason I named the conference Holy Spirit, Fire and Glory, because the Lord said there's a progressive revelation. And the Holy Spirit is our first step. We get born again by the Spirit of God. And that's our baby step. We come into the kingdom through that. And then we get baptized in the Holy Spirit. And the power of God is then released through the gifts of God and, and our vision begins to go out into ministry. And then what happens is after Jesus was baptised, remember, and, and this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased, he's led straight out into the desert. And that's the fire. The, and and see, you see churches in that online and they're calling out fire, 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 fire. They don't even know what they're asking for because... I tell you, when the fire of God, the baptism of fire, begins to come, it's the sanctification. It's, it's the purifying work of the Holy Spirit. He boils the silver and gets the dross. He boils the gold. And the fire, the baptism of fire, is all of the trials, all of the tribulations, all of the persecution, all of the battles that we go through. And the fire is designed to purify us that if, like it says in Ephesians, that we should grow up into the full stature of the image of Jesus Christ. And the fire of God comes to form the character and the nature of Christ within us. Because it's not about just having a salvation experience and then praying every day because we sin in word, thought and deed. I think that's a false doctrine. It's, it, you, you come to God and then you live your life and you're going through this purifying process where the image of Jesus Christ is being formed in you. And the image of Jesus, and because th that part of us is going to live forever, you know, we're going to live forever. And the body that we bear, it says in Corinthians, our bodies is literally falling apart, physically, and mine is, anyway, it's literally falling apart. This used to be a chest. <coughs> now it's a, it's a wardrobe. But, um, but as our, as our, in the spirit, as our physical body is literally falling apart, the spirit man inside us is being formed into the image of Jesus Christ. And the, and the purifying work of the Holy Spirit is working in our life, and the, and the image of Christ is being formed day after day and week after week and year after year, and, and, and you're growing more and more into the maturity of Christ. And then the Lord said to me, it's when you come to that point of maturity, you enter into a different place, and that's when the glory comes. The, gl the glory comes on the purified vessel. Um, I, I actually love poetry, although you laugh, but um, one of the poems I learned many, many years ago, it was one of the first ones I memorised, and it, it says, only an earthen vessel, Lord, cracked and stained within, ready to be useful, Lord, in spite of what I am. Use this earthen vessel where crystal wouldn't do. Use this earthen vessel for it belongs to you. And God takes the broken earthen vessel and he does this work of purification. You see, God is not withholding his power, but he won't give the power to the immature because it will destroy us. It will literally destroy us. So we have to understand in the dealings of God is that we have to allow God to work. You know, um, on Sunday, the Holy Spirit, the glory of God, came and hit Jonathan and Natasha and Natasha had an, an amazing poem and I was sharing with Anne and that a little bit earlier and, and, and it was a little bit about our journey in ministry and that and, and, and they were honouring Nancy and I and, and you know you, you appreciate that but the Lord bowed, I was sitting there and the glory of God came on and he bowed my head down and pushed me down over and I was like that for 
45 minutes and I couldn't lift up, I couldn't lift up my head, I couldn't move, I couldn't do anything. And, and this, this is a beautiful picture because, because the Lord, I felt humbled by the Lord. Even though I was being honoured by my spiritual sons and daughter, and that's a good thing, but I was being humbled by the Lord. And you know the story of the wheat and the tears and the, you know, when the head, when the fruit comes up, the wheat, the, it bows over. And I felt God's goodness to me was showing me my humanity, who I'm not great. You know, I've already written what I want on my epitaph on my grave, and it's, it, it, it's this, is here lies a man with a great God. <laughs> There's no great man here, just, just a man with all of his weaknesses and frailties who, through God's wonderful grace, came into contact with a great God. I have a great God. And so I felt honour, but the Lord, in his grace, he humbled me. I just felt he just bowed me over. I, I, I spend a lot of time like that when I go to the Lord in prayer and my office, I'm up often early in the morning, and by 10 o'clock in the morning I can spend five or six hours with the Lord before I even come down into here, and often I'll go into my office and um, I might be reading the Word or I just start praying and the Spirit of God just starts coming, I feel the glory of God just comes and, um, and the weight just comes in and I end up off my seat and I end up, I'm on the floor and then I'm going down and down and down and I end up usually like this, <laughs> and when I get to that stage, I wish I could be absorbed into the ground. I wish I could go lower, because you, you just recognise how insignificant you are. You know, as I said earlier, you know, what is man that you are mindful of him? And as you mature in the Lord, um, there's different things, you know, when we're a baby Christian, all of our prayer is about us, you know, please God, give me a car park, um, you know, when you go to the shops, um, I need money, I need this, do this, do that, do that, and it's the baby stage, and then you, you grow up a little bit more, and you go through a different stage in your journey with the Lord, and it actually, you become aware of the body around you, and that's often where you get connected to the church. And then it's, oh, my church, our church, my friends. You begin to pray for people. And, and so you go from, it's all about you looking up to the Lord, give me, give me, give me. And you get up to this point and you get into tribes. You get into denominational church tribes and camps. And then, and then you're learning from that tribe. And it's all about the tribe that you're in and the connection that you have, right? And then then the Lord wants to mature you to the next level. And, and um, the next level is when you are in the heavenly realms and you are looking down on the earth through God's eyes. You begin to see the earth through God's eyes. And, and then everything, um, the Lord spoke to me recently about, you know, that Satan disagreed with the Lord and the Lord threw him out of heaven. Uh, Eve and Adam disagreed with the Lord and the Lord threw them out of the garden. And the Lord just spoke to me cause about uh, our sin and, and, and gave a simple explanation. The explanation is, is anywhere we disagree with God is actually sin. God will, it's not acceptable for humanity to disagree with God in any area. So the reason we study the word and we get into his presence is that we've got to know God so that we understand what is acceptable to God and what is not acceptable to God. So when we come to an issue like same-sex marriage, is that acceptable to God? It's an easy question to ask. We all know no. We all know marriage is so sanctified, it's so incredible that God would put Adam into a deep sleep and take out of his side woman and then the marriage ceremony is created by God before, fall, before the fall, before sin came in, and the covenant of marriage where he puts the two parts of humanity back, back together. And people, people don't understand it because in your walk with the Lord, you go through from selfish to more selfless, but you're, you're tribal. When you, when you get to the point in your prayer and your relationship, when you get to that point, you're not talking all the time. You're not asking for anything. You've got nothing. What have you got to say to God? 
a change, even your prayer change, because it, I hope you, you pick up on this, because what happens is you're just silent before the Lord. You're just one word from God. One word from God is worth more than a million of your words. There's nothing, you don't, so then you hear the word of the Lord. And that word, I, I call it prophecy, but it's, it's like prophetic prayer. When he speaks, you speak what he says. People don't understand. They don't understand because when you're living your life from the perspective of God, lots of things become unacceptable. In fact, let me, put it, let me explain it this way. Everything that is post the fall, pretty much everything that is created after the fall is unacceptable. In the garden, he created humanity, not Tribes, tongues, races, nations, human beings. It wasn't about colour. Human beings. That's what he created. So that's the heavenly image. That's the thing. So when you get back to you begin to see the world from God's perspective, you're not looking at, you're not focusing on that stuff. It's just humanity. I hope you understand. It's just humanity and all the other stuff begins to fold off. But see, if you are not living from God's perspective, you will incorporate into your life many, many things that are not acceptable in God's presence. You can be actually spending most of your life chasing stuff that will never go to heaven. It'll never enter in. And in fact, if you understand, if you understand God, um, you are disagreeing with God. You're disagreeing with God. And you're, and you're chasing things, and dis like the whole gender issue. Who, who are we? Who is humanity to say to God, you didn't make male and female, but you made all of these other confused beings? You're disagreeing with God. And disagreeing, disagreeing with God, if you understand that, becomes sin. It's, it's totally unacceptable. You don't go to heaven with that stuff. But there's a lot of other stuff that, you know, we, we, that gets left out. And so what, what, what we're, what we're desiring, and I want, I want to tell you this too, the, the power of the Holy Spirit doesn't come from striving. It's not by much prayer. It comes from surrender. And that's why when you go into his presence, you're not always talking. Because it's not interesting what you've got to say. <laughs> it's really, really not. He knows everything before you even... He knows all your needs before you even ask. That's what the scripture says. So you go there to hear you go there to hear, and then he speak, and then the Lord begins to speak. And I just want to say this too, for I know pastors were understanding the churches, because when you come with the word of the Lord on Sunday or during the week and you're preaching, for you, if you've been there, you're bringing the word of God. And sometimes the people don't, oh, it's just Murray, or oh, it's just another story, or oh, it's just a bit of this, or it's just a bit of that. They take it or leave it. It's almost like you're... You know, the Lord lays a menu, the meal out before you, and most of it you leave on the side of your plate. You pick up a little bit of dessert, dessert and off you go. You've got to understand. Um, I mean, the scripture says things like, this is getting out there now, obey those who rule over you. See, we don't even understand what it is to submit to God and godly leadership. And we wonder why we're not breaking through. We wonder why we're not seeing what we really, really want to see. Because it, go, it goes back, we're, we're disagreeing with God. God says to do this, and we disagree with that. Oh, we want to put our two bobs with. We want our opinion. Our opinion is important. We're all individuals. You know, Moses, I'm just like Moses. I'm just like this one. I'm not trying to exalt myself. I'm trying to show, I'm trying to, because the body has to mature very quickly now because we're in a horrendous battle. But everything has changed in our world. They're not ignoring the church. The church is the enemy. They're going to try and destroy the bride of Christ. Satan is going to go now, hard out, to destroy the bride of Christ. If you can't get the pastor, he'll get your kids. He'll go after your kids. If he can't get your kids, he'll go after your grandkids. He'll hit your finance. He'll hit your physical. Your physical. That's why we've got to get in the glory. We've got to move in the glory and the miraculous power of God because he can keep us well. He can provide for us. when In, in times of poverty, in times of famine, he can provide for us. He can provide for us. He and only he can save our children and protect them, right? O only God can do all of these things. And I, I just want to encourage you with this because the, the other side of us too is when you're in that place with God, 
your life, it's amazing. It's just your life is incredible. It's like there's storms all around and you're just going on through. You know what I mean? The people are raging and screaming and you're just going on through. You're just going on through because you're hearing, you're hearing, you're hearing from God. And, and I know God wants to come and move and touch us in these days. Right now, I know that God wants to come. And so uh, what I want us to do now, I think we'll just stand up. And I just want you to close your eyes. And it's really nice just to be alone with God. <coughs> and the way we get alone with God in a crowd is we just close our eyes. <laughs> and so there's nobody else here. Just you and him. And the Holy Spirit's here because he planned these meetings. And he's doing a new thing. And like Nancy said, he loves you. Every single one of you he created. A total individual, there's only one you. God only created one of you, and he loves you. And the Holy Spirit, oh, he wants to do everything for us. He wants to provide, protect, direct. He wants to keep you healthy. He wants to empower you. It says in the Scriptures in Corinthians, you know, when the Holy Spirit comes on you, all of these gifts... Um, word of knowledge, word of wisdom, miracles, healings, plural, healings, miracles, faith. He has all these gifts for us. And so Holy Spirit, I just ask now, Holy Spirit, you just begin to come and touch your kids, your family, your church, your bride, your army. Oh. Let your glory. The word for glory in the Hebrew is kabod. It means weight, the weight. It's another level. It's above and beyond the gifts of the Holy Spirit that often work on an individual level. You know, the power of the Holy Spirit, the fullness of the Holy Spirit, the gifts of the Holy Spirit, they work in ministry. And then you get to another level and it's the glory. And when the glory of God begins to come in the midst, all the way through the Bible, there was God would come in his glory. There was fire. There was clouds. I've been reading Exodus, and when he took them out of slavery after 400 years, it said that there was not one person sick among them. They'd been slaves for 400 years, not one person sick. And they walked out of Egypt with their arms filled with gold and silver and treasure, wealthy and healthy. And then all that gold and silver was going to be dedicated to the Lord, building the Lord's temple and the Ark of the Covenant and that. There's, I feel God is, is healing bodies now and minds. I just want to let you know God never comes alone. When the Lord comes, the whole entourage of heaven comes. The angels, the elders, 
the living creatures, they all come. The heavenly host, cloud of witnesses. I can see them leaning over the ramparts of heaven looking down at his church, cheering us on. <laughs> I believe that the Lord is calling people tonight in the ministry and the Lord is calling people out of things, out of jobs and careers that you may have been in to this point. The Lord wants to call you out because they're worthless areas, unfruitful areas for the kingdom of God. And he's calling people in to ministry areas, into, mini into ministry areas. He's calling young people into an intimacy of his presence. He's going to reveal himself to you, young people. He's going to open up your eyes that you might see into the heavenly realms. And the Spirit, the Holy Spirit of God is going to begin to flood down over the young and over your children. Your children are going to have dreams and revelations and angelic visitations and the Lord is going to begin to open the eyes of a new generation. They're going to be risen up in the power of God in a whole new way. They're going to function at a whole new level. God's going to equip a generation of the righteous. He's going to raise them up in a whole new way. And we're going to be amazed to see what God is doing with our children, the grandchildren, what's going to, what's going to happen. And, I, and, I, and if, you're, if you're sensing, then I, and don't, don't come to get something, but if you're sensing that God is touching you, that something's happening, I just want you to, I just want to, you to slip forward tonight and um, I just feel to pray for you, not to get something. You're not coming to get something. You're coming because something's happening to you. You know something's going on in your life, that the Holy Spirit's already doing something. Just, just slip out, come forward. Come up forward so people can get up behind you. Just come, just come, just come, just come, that's it, just let the Holy Spirit, oh, I tell you, the glory of God. Just come, just come, move forward. There's more. There's more, just come, just come, come quickly, come quickly. Just let them go, mate, just, just leave each other alone. Don't touch him. More Holy Spirit. He's calling. He's coming. See the young, you see what's happening over here? He's coming. There's some deliverance going on there. There's some others too. The Lord's touching some others. Just come, just come. Like there's a window of opportunity for you. The Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit's moving. Just come. You don't need to be afraid. We already warned you. <laughs> More Holy Spirit. More. As some of you standing out there, there's intercession. You, you need to tune in to the Spirit and pray. This is how you pray. Holy Spirit, I agree with you. I agree with you. I agree with you for these that have responded. I come into agreement with the Holy Spirit tonight. There's healing. There's deliverance. The call. The call. The call. Sanctification, separate it. The Lord's going to separate you. There's, there's like a healing of the broken heart right there now. More Holy Spirit. More Holy Spirit. It's not striving. Just relax. Just relax. And, and, and if, you, if you just pray, pray. It's only one prayer. I agree with you, Holy Spirit. I welcome you. I welcome your presence. 
<laughs> he who sits in the heavens laughs. <laughs> oh. More Holy Spirit. <clears throat> we just want the Holy Spirit just to complete the work that he's doing there in your lives and <laughs> it's dangerous to cough, isn't it, really? <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Okay, just, just all those, everyone in the congregation, just close your eyes and just, just lift up your hand if you're just wanting to receive a fresh touch and just lift up your hands to the Lord. and Holy Spirit, we, we just... We just Surrender ourselves to you. We're lifting up our hands, Holy Spirit, because we need you desperately in our lives. And we're just asking that you would come and reveal yourself to us in a fresh, a fresh and a new way. Revive us again. Blow on these dry bones, Lord. Blow on these dry bones. Let the wind of your spirit. Remember they were in the upper room. And there was a sound of a mighty rushing wind and cloven tongues as of fire came down and alighted on each and they all began to speak in, in, in language and tongues as the Holy Spirit gave them utterance. Alrighty, we're just going to wait a little while longer. With, with the meetings, you know, there's going to be flexibility and if the people ministering feel the prophesy, they will prophesy. Um, if they go over time, they can go over time. It doesn't matter. We want, we want the Holy Spirit to be able to do what he wants to do, not what we want to do. And so we, we're just going to allow that freedom. And you're going to hear different stories, different ways that the Holy Spirit touched and ministered to different people and also different time frames. And um, I feel like the Lord's just saying that he's going to settle on us and uh, during this week that the Spirit of God is just going to continue to minister. Don't be surprised if the Lord wakes you up at 3 o'clock in the morning or 4 o'clock in the morning and don't be surprised if you have a dream and you dream a spiritual dream like you never dreamt before. Don't be surprised if suddenly angels appear or <laughs> something. Don't be surprised because that's our... That's where we live. This world, you know, we've got so f overwhelmed with the natural world. The spiritual world is unnatural to us, but we are born again by the Spirit of God, and our God is a supernatural spiritual being. He's, he's incredible, and he's wanting to take his church up into the supernatural realm because then the supernatural power of God is going to get released for the harvest and the soul's. And there's miracles and healings everywhere. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Okay. The worship, let the worship team, you guys just stay up here and uh, maybe the worship team can come up. <coughs>
going to get, I'll get the worship team just to sing, calling out, we're calling out to the Holy Spirit, and um, hey, we bless you guys for coming out tonight, the Lord's not through with us yet, we're only just beginning, and if you're able to make some time during the day, 9.30 in the morning, sessions tomorrow, there'll be two sessions in the morning, all the afternoons free, and everything after lunch, 6.30 tomorrow night, and then the next day, the next day Saturday, and um, there's, there's a whole lot of different, you know, Anne, Anne's going to be sharing on Saturday and Wes and Janet are going to be sharing and Dave and Denise are going to be sharing, Jonathan's going to be sharing, Corey Kelly, every, there's a whole team um, are going to be sharing their experiences with the Lord and um, maybe we just have the team sing it to us first, you can start doing that quietly and you might want to just, just rest a little bit, a little while longer, just relax, the Holy Spirit's still here, He's still ministering. Fresh 
place, right, um, where you're not doing a lot of talking like I am tonight, and you're quiet in your heart because you want to just hear what God, there's another thing you've got to understand is then you're beginning to operate on the kingdom principles. And when you're in the kingdom, when you see, when you're looking down from God's perspective on the church, there's only one church. 
it's the middle stage where you see all the different denominations, all the different churches and all the different people and you've got your tribes and your groups and your th little theological quirks. When you get up there, it's just all about agreeing with God, being in agreement, total agreement with God. He's only got one church. And uh, you're looking down and then, then you have what you call a kingdom perspective. One church, one people, one race under God sounds like America. No. Everything, you know, everything, all the other stuff drops off. That's what you've got to understand. All of, all of the post-fall, you know, all the division, the racism, all the stuff, it all goes. It all goes because you're now a kingdom person and you're seeing the world from God's perspective. And then the heart of God is to gather up all his children and bring them into that kingdom, not into all of the denominational garbage down here, all of the different church garbage, up into the kingdom of God where we become one in Him, in agreement with each other, in agreement with Him. We can agree with each other if we all agree with Him. You don't have to agree with me, but if you'll agree with Him, we'll all end up agreeing. Amen. Hey, well, look, before you go, shake a hand or headbutt somebody that you don't know or give them a little hug or something and, you know, just bless them. Let the love of God be shed abroad in your heart. It's another miracle of the Holy Spirit is God's love in his body. Meet someone that you maybe haven't met or you didn't know. It's fabulous to have uh, Living Waters here with us. It's fabulous to have Powerhouse here. It's fabulous to have you here, wherever you came from. And um, we're just the family of God. God bless, God bless, God bless. May the Spirit of the Lord give you dreams, miracles, and visitations.